afternoon, Facebook. This is Debbie Eno with Jessica, one of my female educators, and we'll be speaking on self-care for educators. One of the challenges we have constantly is female educators not um, taking care of themselves. Jessica, can you please introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Sure, thank you, Debbie. Uh, my name is Jessica Nava. I'm an English teacher and a coordinator. I, I'm a coordinator for Universidad Politecnica uh, de Cotitlan Iscali. That's uh, here in Mexico. It's an engineering uh, university. And I'm also teaching for middle school students as well as elementary students. Okay. Right, some of the things we actually struggle with as female educators, especially, is our inability to care for ourselves. We are busy taking care of everybody else except for ourselves. So what I'm going to be looking at is self-care. What do we do in terms of ensuring that we put time aside to take care for ourselves? Because one of the issues are you cannot pour from an empty vessel. There's sometimes we need to remember that. So Jessica, how are you going to, how do you deal with self-care for yourself? Okay, there. Okay. Were you able to hear my presentation? Yes, right? Because my, my mic Yes, I'm, I'm hearing you, but it seems to be some lagging. Um, okay, but uh, yeah, I'm done there, right? Okay, I think I started way before we started, we, we uh, were sent home. Uh, I started organizing myself, organizing the, the work um, I'm supposed to do, uh, not only uh, at school, not only as a teacher, not only as an administrator, but also as a mom, as a wife, as a daughter, as a sister. Uh, I tried giving every, everything a moment and not overloading myself with work. You know, teachers, we are very passionate and we are always trying to do something else, something extra, or we sometimes even get stuck on the computer uh, designing or planning for the next day. But um, I realized that I was losing myself in this process. I was overworking. Uh, and although sometimes it may be good to be a workaholic, you know, because we, we give very good results when, when we take a work to another level. But mm. we do need to uh, look inside mm. to see what's uh, going on. You know, I've always said that we need to take care and we need to, uh, um, we need to take care of our demons, right? So I think that self-care has a lot to do with emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Uh, being able to identify what's uh, harming us, what's uh, bothering us, what's even uh, taking us uh, to a certain uh, reaction. You know, mm -hmm. we need to know uh, what is making or what is causing a certain reaction uh, that we are having towards others. You know? So I think that every time we react to something, it's nothing else but a reflection of what is going on inside. So um, during this period um, that I've been teaching at home, I've been trying to like uh, giving myself a moment in which I go off either to the kitchen uh, or somewhere else where I can sing, where I can, where I can grab a book and, and read something that I like, where I can actually listen to myself, to what I, I want to do and give myself that, that free time. I know there are many uh, teachers out there saying, what about free time, right? I don't have any free time. I'm uh, on the computer and also uh, work becoming double during this period of uh, teaching online because you have to prepare uh, extra material that you probably uh, didn't have to prepare when you are in the classroom because you have other, uh, other resources that you can uh, help yourself from. But um, I think we do need to find a moment in which we can actually listen to ourselves and, and identify what is harming us, what is making us feel uncomfortable, unhappy, 
I know everybody is getting overwhelmed uh, being at home or missing uh, your loved ones, your friends, or even sometimes coworkers. But uh, I think this is also a moment in which we have to uh, take care of ourselves and what we need, what we feel. Right, 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 right. So prior to COVID-19, how have you been looking after yourself? Uh, well, first of all, I know there are many people out there that know me and that will probably disagree on what I'm going to say, but uh, um, I try to take care of myself, uh, first of all, with what I eat, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know how we've been told that we are what we eat, our brain yeah. is what we eat. So um, here in Mexico, I mean, I don't know if you, you've heard about Mexican food, authentic Mexican food. Uh, it's not very healthy. It's not very right. healthy. Although it's very delicious, uh, it's not very healthy to, to eat it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But uh, I started uh, taking care of uh, my, myself in terms of what I eat, uh, having a, my resting uh, periods uh, being respected, like uh, sleeping what I have to sleep. Uh, sometimes I know that's impossible. You have to get up really early in the morning and then because of work, you have to go to bed at uh, very late at night also. But um, I think, uh, again, I'll pick up on what I mentioned at the beginning, uh, mm -hmm. organizing myself, organizing yeah. myself on, on creating certain schedules, certain periods in which I have to carry out uh, the, the work I need to get done. So mm -hmm. when, when uh, it's ready to go home, uh, when I'm ready to go home, it's time to go home. Mm -hmm. When it's ready to go to sleep, uh, when it's time to go to sleep, I mean, I'm ready to do so. So you have to listen. I started listening to my body. I started listening right. to what was going wrong, when, uh, what I was, uh, the pain I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. everything, all that started, um, again, reflecting on my mood. No? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I started listening to how I felt, and mm -hmm. that has helped me a lot mm -hmm. uh, overcoming the situation that we've been living now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the interesting thing is one of the things uh, I actually find with educators, we just walk, 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 and we don't think in terms of what our body is telling us. Because there are times our body is saying to us, okay, I understand that you need to do this marking. I understand you need to do this preparation, but you need to take some time off and go for a walk. And when you come back, you will be ready to focus. Because I've actually found myself in that same situation whereby I would stay up all night, marking, preparing, and I'm just dead tired. And I still have to go and teach in the morning. You know, because of the amount of workload we do have, but we need to realize as educators, we will never finish this workload. It's a matter of prioritizing what needs to be done for tomorrow. So we do that because too often we feel that we need to be the best teacher out, plan every single thing, make sure we cross the T's and dot the I's. Yes, you could be a very good teacher, however, if you're not taking care of yourself, there is no point because it means that you become frustrated. What I've discovered is when educators don't take care of themselves, they become very, very frustrated and they start taking it out on the students, you know, start blaming the students for being there, saying, oh, these students get on my nerves. As I said to one of my colleagues, if the students were not here, we wouldn't have a job. You know, so as educators, we need to know when it is time to take time out. You know, as you said, Jessica, when your body's beginning to tell you, we need, we need to listen to that. Too often we ignore the signals because the assignment is taking priority. You know, yes, we need to do the assignment, but you also need to be present for your student as well. You know, another question I wanna ask you, how, do you, how, how are you present for your students? What do you do? to ensure that you are present in the classroom when you actually get there with your students? Uh, you know, um, I've been working for a couple of years on um, some, inf um, I think it will, some information, some research on uh, laughter uh, therapy. Mm -hmm. 
with a comprehensible input from mm. Dr. Stephen D. Krashen that I had mentioned before. Um, so what I try to do, what uh, it's make them feel comfortable, mm -hmm. make uh, try to engage them in a way that uh, they want to be there, right? Because mm -hmm. some of them don't want to be there; they're forced uh, to be there. I observed some classes from elementary, uh, from my elementary teachers, mm -hmm. and I realized uh, that it's uh, that for uh, an elementary uh, student, let's say fourth grade, third grade. It's so difficult to engage them in the classroom, even worse in front of a computer where they can get distracted with whatever at home, or they can even get distracted with the computer, mm -hmm. doing something else on the computer. You don't have like a complete control of what is happening on the other side of, of the screen. So what I try to do is, um, first of all, be there. Mm -hmm. be there show, showing my face uh, mm -hmm. as you can see my background i think it's a little mm -hmm. uh overloaded mm -hmm. but uh i try for them to to become curious about what i'm gonna say what i'm gonna ask them to do mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. also observing classes as a coordinator i've realized that that there are some students that um uh, they try or um, they avoid mm -hmm. being on the screen Okay. For whatever different reasons uh, there may be, uh, they, they avoid being on the screen. So that's kind of difficult as a teacher because you cannot see their faces. I don't know if they, yeah. you don't know if they're enjoying, if they're confused, if they're yeah. feeling bad. So what yeah. I, I ask them to do is to be there also. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm there, if I'm showing myself, I ask them to also be on the camera. So I can be following up on how they're feeling or what they want. You can right away tell when a student is bored. Yeah, yeah. So uh, whenever I feel them like uh, coming down and feeling uh, not, not wanting to be there, I, I try to be funny. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. I, I try to be funny. Uh, yeah. Not all of my jokes work <laughs> all the time. But I try to be also up to date, even yeah. uh, as a teacher, like in general, I try to be up to date to, uh, from, um, to what they want, to what they like. Yeah. So I can use that in class. Yeah. And honestly, I've taken several uh, webinars from uh, different uh, publishers. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, this uh, webinar that I took and it was um, on authentic materials. Mm -hmm. So that's something also that I try to uh, reflect and I try to design in my classes that they see uh, all this engaging uh, information, all this attractive because they are very attracted uh, to to Facebook, to to YouTube, and I've mm -hmm. seen this happen also with my six year old. Mm -hmm. Like he wants to be watching stuff and uh, mm -hmm. not educational stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on, on yeah, YouTube. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I try to take from there and I try to take from real life and yeah. from what they do and, yeah. and become become what they want to see. To yeah. Try to hook them into what I want them to do and to want to be there. OK, 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 OK. Thank you. How you you know, another thing is, how do you ensure that the students that you are teaching? I know it's very challenging when you're actually trying to teach them online. How do you ensure that they are taking care of themselves? Because when they're in the classroom, we could actually have discussion in terms of, okay, have you had breakfast? You know, we could actually see that they, you know, some of them are lethargic. You know, we know all of that. We could actually feel it in the classroom because we have the experience, et cetera. How are you able to ensure that these students you're teaching online, that they're taking care of themselves? Because in the classroom, when they're tired, they actually zone out. So we cannot even teach them. So we know that there's something wrong in terms of they taking care of themselves. So in terms of you actually teaching them on screen, how, you know, what do you do? Or how can you ensure that they're actually taking care of themselves? Well, as I mentioned, it's really hard to know what goes on on the, on the other side of the screen, right? Uh, what I try to do is, um, sort of uh, creating a bound, uh, creating a connection before I even uh, hit them with content from the class. Mm -hmm. um, I, I try to talk to them uh, like 
friendly talk as they log in. They, they, maybe I'll have, I try to log in like 10 or five minutes before the, the, the class starts. Mm -hmm. And I start having conversations with them like, what have you been doing? How do you feel today? And you know what? I've been very surprised uh, about their, their answers. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually like just uh, drop it on you, no? They they tell you, uh, like you know, I, I had a problem with my mom yesterday, so I'm feeling kind of weird and sad, and and oh, you know, I haven't had breakfast. Teacher, may I have my my cracker? May I have a cookie? My because I even do that. I know we shouldn't always do that in class. But I, I, whenever I have classes very early in the morning, especially here in Mexico, I mean, we don't have even private schools. We don't have, uh, I grew up in Texas, in the United States. So like you are able to arrive to school in the morning and maybe have breakfast from the school. Uh, you have that advantage, uh, maybe in other countries, but we don't have that here in Mexico. Even students that um, go to private school very, very, um, sophisticated private schools they okay. come to they come to class very early in the morning without anything in their stomach Whoa. why because they have to rush out here in mexico we start classes at seven o'clock in the morning Whoa. so yes <laughs> somebody needs Whoa. to do something about it. Whoa. Whoa. Yes. how much time do you finish uh three o'clock whoa yes 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 we have to uh lunch breaks uh, but still not enough i mean students don't have a lunch break until uh, nine o'clock so that's two hours in which they are thinking about hamburgers and and uh, hot cakes and yeah. and and food so yeah. it's really 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 hard to get them to actually notice you're you're there because that mm -hmm. they're trying to sneak uh, food in and uh, from their backpacks. So um, being in class, in the classroom, I always let them have something like mm -hmm. fruit. I, I always tell them like nothing stinky, not like no typical Mexican food in the morning <laughs> in the classroom because very stinky, but mm. very smelly, actually smelly, that would be the word. Uh, but uh, I try to do the same, no? although it's really hard whenever I have them in the classroom, it's just as easy as, okay, you have a, a cookie, eat it. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I sort of assure that they're having something to eat. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, on the other side of the screen, they may tell you sometimes like, oh yes, yeah, teacher, whatever. Yeah, sure. It's just like, go ahead. Cause my mother is here next to me and, yeah. and I have to, I have to be paying attention whenever we are lucky enough for parents to be uh, next to them. Uh, in some cases, um, schools uh, tell you, or like the school you work for tell you, it uh, tells you they can be eating in class. Uh, they may not eat, but what is happening now? That obviously elementary and middle school, they're not starting at seven o'clock. Okay. So we're starting a bit uh, later. So they are able to have breakfast. They are able to maybe have uh, some time at home and take a shower, which some of them come into the uh, Zoom class without even combing their, their hair. Uh, but um, what I try to do most of the time is just listen, mm -hmm. listen. Because I mean, they're at home and even though they're communicating with each other, they're communicating with their friends, their cousins, uh, they're uh, they're locked up at home. They're yeah, not really yeah. talking to people outside their family circle. Yeah. And being a friend has helped me a lot because I haven't had any any behavior uh, issues in the class. Right, right. Because right. they sort of feel that need of being there. You no, know? like yeah, I just yeah. I just want to talk to somebody. Uh, so that has helped a lot. Like okay. uh, opening the channels and listening to them. Okay, 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 okay. So it's a match of just allowing them to talk about how they are feeling. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, as I said, when we're at school, we can actually see how they're feeling because we're so close to them, we are able to pick up the body language. We're able to feel it through the energy 
But That's over the screen, it's, it's challenging. Completely. Yeah. Completely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it can be done. It can be done. Yeah, yeah. To a certain yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so when you actually, another thing I want to say, ask you as well, in terms of, okay, what tips would you have for female educators who have been working online? Because another thing, I have quite a lot of educators reaching out to me. I'm saying to them, come to my, come on my program. They don't want to come on my program, but they're reaching out to me. And one of the things I keep on saying is they feel that they're working flat out because it is far more challenging working online than it is face to face. Because it, they also say in terms of their self-care is being totally neglected because they find that every minute they have to be logging on while you're not teaching. Because when you're at class, you do teach several classes if you're in secondary school over here. And in, um, in primary school, you're constantly with the children. So one of the complaints they've been telling, one of the complaints they've been telling me is they're constantly working, especially the educators in America. Some of them saying to me that there is no break. You know, it's like the only break might be for lunch, but they don't even have long lunch, they have to go back on. So in terms of self-care, self-care is, is taking a back seat. So my you know, suggestion to them is, when we talk about self-care, it could be just having 10, 15 minutes for yourself. It could just be going in meditation for five minutes, you know, because you could actually do a five and 10 minutes meditation where you actually just quiet yourself and just meditate for between, it could be for three minutes, between three and five minutes and just quiet your mind and just unload. So that's one of the tips I've actually given some of them. The other thing is I said to them, it could also be just dancing. You just put on some music and just dance. Because as we know, when we dance, it's like all this, you know, energy moving around the body. It actually helps you, you know. Another thing you've said, Jessica, which I find really interesting, you talk about laughing therapy. Right? Do you use that with your students? And how much of that do you use for yourself? Uh, I use it a lot. I have a, my, um, I have a family that, uh, well, my family jokes around a lot. <laughs> yeah. We are very heavy, heavy jokers. Okay, uh, okay. But always in, in a sense of uh, entertaining each other. Yes? Yeah, we, yeah. we love comedy. And uh, as a teacher, studying all the processes that laughter does to your brain mm. and all the chemicals that you yeah. uh, produce by yeah. uh, laughing. Uh, you, you, you mentioned something like um, teachers right now, we're, we're really fed up with work. Mm. We feel like we don't have a, a moment to be ourselves because we mm. always have to be in front of a, a, a camera. Uh, well, at a certain point, posing <laughs> as mm -hmm. teachers yeah. um, I totally take that for myself for my family for my students mm. um, and it has worked I've worked with this for the last probably three three years because um, when we are so like you mentioned before like we, we sometimes are reflecting what we are feeling on students yes like, yes uh, it's your fault you're not behaving, yeah. wait, it's me as a teacher that I'm not finding the tolerance. I'm not yeah. finding, I'm not being the adult, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like we get yeah. caught up with, with our students and we yeah. can, uh, as human beings, before even being teachers, I think yeah. that as human beings, we tend to blame it on the other person yeah. before actually looking at ourselves, right? Yeah. So what I, what I uh, use, what I have been using as a strategy to to survive that situation yeah, yeah. is to enjoy myself. Yeah. Enjoy myself, and uh, I love singing. I, okay. I love singing. Yes, I, I I love singing. I know there are probably people watching me right now. Like, yeah, you don't even sing that well, right? But <laughs> I, I, it doesn't I, matter. I, that's right. 
but I, I give it a try. Uh, even uh, singing has been a ritual for many cultures for many thousands uh, of years. Yeah. So uh, I found that uh, that uh, I found that uh, singing for me, it's mm -hmm. a way of just taking it out, mm -hmm. of getting rid of it. Um, emotions are nowadays making people sick, mm -hmm. uh, like cancer and all these illnesses that are caused by negative um, emotions. And this mm -hmm. is something I spoke with my family over the weekend mm -hmm. that we spoke about. So um, I realized that making my students laugh yeah. made them feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah taking that uh, to the next step of opening their affective filter and becoming a uh, receptive on what I wanted to share or what I mm. want to share. So that's why it has worked because um, this has helped uh, me, it has helped me and my, my students overcome uh, emotional situations that we are facing outside the classroom or outside the, the Zoom classroom. Mm -hmm. So what I, I try to do with uh, therapy, uh, with laughter therapy, is to make them forget about everything that is wrong in, in the world, in their lives, mm -hmm. and have them enjoy the class just the way we sometimes enjoy a, a funny movie or a funny video or a meme or, or whatever mm -hmm, that we, mm -hmm. we can relate with, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think in, in another word, uh, to, to find um, our center point, uh, we need to uh, try to enjoy ourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because some of the things I do with my student in relationship to um, them taking care of themselves, and sometimes during the class, you realize that you you kind of lose them because it's either they're so tired and the brain is no longer functioning. So I would actually take them out of the classroom. We go outside of the classroom and run around the building of the school. What should I say to me, Miss, you're mad. No, I am not mad. You know, we need to go so that you can actually have the oxygen circulating again in your That's brain. That's right. You know, so that's one of the things we've done. And we actually go outside sometimes to dance around and do exercise. And they say, Miss, I'm not doing it. Yes, you are. That has to be done before we go back in the classroom. Oh, we are not going to go back in the classroom. So things like that I do with them. I also do meditation with them as well. You know, so that they could actually center because sometimes they're so tired, you know. So it's a matter of, okay, we need to center you. So we have to stop. Hands down, let's do meditation. So we do meditation for three to five minutes. We in meditation. There are other times I put on music and I say to them, let's see who could dance the best, you know, <laughs> yes. in terms of competition, whatever, but just trying to get them to, to dance so that they can actually get this energy flowing again. So these are some of the things I actually do with my students. I also encourage the educators to do these things. You know, because I do say to them that educators need to do those things because in terms of self-care, self-care doesn't mean that it's going to be anything big and elaborate. As you say, laughter, something simple. Another thing is, as I said to educators, there are times you just have a nice long bath. Nice long bath with candles just unwind. That is your time. Self-care is about me time. Self-care is not selfish, is ensuring that you put aside some time for you loving yourself, falling in love with yourself again. In the same way as I said to them, if it was a new man in your life or someone new, you're going to really fall over them to make sure that, you know, you connect with them to make sure you do everything nice and right for them. What happened to you? You are the most important person in the universe. That's right. So That's it is right. so important that we take care of us. We are so important and we forget all of that. 
Because as educators, if you are not taking care of yourself, as I said earlier on, there is no way you are going to be present for your student. And as you rightly said, Jessica, the student feel it. Completely. Because Completely. you're projecting on them, so they're feeling it. That's right. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> so those are the things we need to be so careful about. And we need to remember, we are the most important person on this universe. No one else is more important than us. No one else is more beautiful than us. No one else, you know, deserve better than us. And that is so important as especially educators. I know everybody's going to say, oh, but why are you talking about educators? You know what? These people are looking after all you guys children out there. <laughs> so we need to encourage them to look after themselves. That's correct. That's right. Because, I mean, uh, nobody's going to come from outside of us and fix things for 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 ourselves we need Fantastic, to yeah. uh, we need to do it we need to uh, be aware we need to be aware of, of what is happening i know sometimes it's really hard because we are so um we are we we're carrying our burdens <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. uh we're, we're carrying our very very heavy burdens but um but in the end this is something my 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 dad has uh, taught me that uh, I know things are going very wrong in the world and, and they have always been, right? I think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nothing has ever been perfect in, in the world, but uh, nothing, nothing can be done uh, when we go, when, we're, yeah. when we die, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing else can be done. Yeah. So uh, if we don't take care of ourselves and do things while we're here, well, well, we're we're still given a, a chance because yeah. I think just the 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 mere fact of being alive, of being breathing, and as teachers, and let me tell you that this is coming from Mexico, third world country. We have a job, and being in front of a computer, I know it's it's really hard, but uh, making it even harder by complaining or putting more weight on, on ourselves is not going to make us pull through. We need to be strong, but not to the point of uh, falling apart. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. and we need, we need to be thankful for uh, still having the chance of carrying out knowledge and having contact with our students. Because mm -hmm. um, there have been many teachers who have lost their jobs during this uh, crisis, uh, during this hard time. So all the teachers that we're still having a chance of being in front of a group, in front of students, uh, let's make the best out of it. Let's mm. make the best experience that we can mm -hmm. out of the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you in that sense that, you know, need to be grateful. And we also be, need to be mindful in terms of, you know, do the best for ourselves, because only then could you actually be present with your students. Because if you are not present with yourself and having enough rest and eating well, there's no way you could be present for your student. You know, something you said earlier on is a reminder, we are what we eat. Many educators do not take care of themselves. I know for myself in terms of when we are in the school, in the staff room, we are eating at our desk. That's right. At, exactly. And in some cases, the lunchtime, only 40 minutes. And while you're having eating at your desk, you're having a student knocking at the door. That's For right. self-care, we need to have a cutoff point. We need to remind the student that it is lunchtime and this is my time. Whether or not it is a 10 minute break, it's a 30 minutes break. It's a 40 minutes break. This is our time in order to revive ourselves before we go back to the class. Because as educators, you know that while we in the class, there's no respite. That's right. <laughs> yes, for a fact. <laughs> yeah. 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 There are no respites. 
Mm -hmm. Right, Jessica, what do you want to leave? What else do you want to say to us? What you're going to leave us with? One word from you, a few words from you before we okay. actually wrap up. I promise to be brief. <laughs> so, well, um, in my case, uh, teaching is it's a, it's truly a call. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the reason why I'm poor. <laughs> I'm still poor. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, honestly, I'm, I'm very passionate. People that know me uh, know, well, they know for a fact that I'm very passionate about it. And that um, I've had my um, hard times, like my difficult crisis, emotional mm -hmm. times over this period. And, and even before, I mean, mm -hmm. I, like all of you, I've cried in the classroom. I've wanted it to become uh, something else that mm -hmm. is not uh, having to, to teach. Mm -hmm. uh, but as a mother, I've also realized that I want to become the teacher that I want in the future or today or tomorrow for my son. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes it's really sad, but it's, 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 uh, it's very true that sometimes our students only have us. Yeah. We are sometimes the only adult in their lives that mm -hmm. actually listens, that mm -hmm. can give them a hug. Mm. And, and this, I think this is a situation happening all over the world, yeah. uh, regardless, regardless of the economical uh, situation that you may live in. Mm. Uh, students are in, in very uh, difficult emotional and mental um, danger mm. at this point, and especially yeah. right now that they're yeah. not uh, being able to socialize with each other. I yeah. see this happening with my son too. So yeah. we need to take care of them right now. Yeah. Uh, I know we won't meet the aims. We won't meet the objectives as we would in the classroom. Mm -hmm. But let's pray and let's be very, very uh, positive that we will have the chance to come back to them uh, face to face. Mm -hmm. But right now we need to take care of, first of all, ourselves mm -hmm. yes 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 number one yes. is, whether we are online or we are in the classroom because uh, i mentioned as i mentioned before uh, it's very sad to know whenever somebody uh, is sick not only mm. covid right now mm. but uh, mm. we get sick from different things throughout the year and, yeah. and knowing that somebody uh, up to the point even of talking about suicide you no know? mm. uh, uh, i think uh, i mean i'm not going to talk about suicide that's a completely other issue but um i think that at some point it has a lack of self-care uh, behind mm. and we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't wait for our body or mind to be uh, completely um out of uh, out of our hands in terms of a cure or uh, like cancer and all these other uh, illnesses that uh, as a res that are a result of our own emotions. So I really I strongly believe that our emotions mm -hmm. are uh, the way we feel uh, can help us. Um, take care of our bodies too. Mm -hmm. and, and well, obviously uh, taking care of what we eat, mm -hmm. it's, a, yeah. it's a must, it's a yeah. must. No? Yeah. There, there are certain foods, there are certain foods that are also help us feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I even speak for myself because I cannot tell you right now that my diet is completely healthy, uh, mm -hmm. but I try having maybe fruit or a, mil a, a milkshake or something before I start my class. Do not go uh, with an empty stomach into your classes. Mm -hmm. uh, we are at home right now. So let's, let's t try to make this an advantage. Yeah, yeah. Instead of uh, something that is against us, okay? Let's try yeah. to make being at home. I'm pretty sure all of you, if not uh, all of you, most of you, have thought at some point in the classroom, I want to be at home. Yeah. I want to be with my child. Yeah. I want to have coffee in my kitchen. Instead yes. Of yeah. The teacher's lounge, right? I know right now we are very sentimental and we're missing our students, but uh, let's also take uh, advantage of, of being at home. Yeah. Of, of, 
of wearing a pajamas on, on, on <laughs> I know I may seem very formal right now, but uh, you wouldn't like to see my pajamas now. <laughs> I'm actually wearing pajamas underneath, but uh, take advantage, you know? take advantage yeah. of yeah. having uh, moments for yourselves at home. Yeah. And, and if you want to cry, cry. Yeah. And if yeah. you want to feel bad, feel bad. Yeah. Uh, drain it. Drain yeah. it. So yeah. because that's the only way of, of getting rid of it. No, yeah. accept the way you feel and then just let it go. Yeah. That yeah. Be, that would be it. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. You know, educators and other people out there, you know, you should not see self-care as being selfish. Self-care is one of the most powerful, powerful, powerful thing that you need to make sure that you prioritize. Because if you do not take care of yourself, if you do not love on yourself, there is no way you will actually have the energy, the mindset, the, the everything else to give to someone else, right? You've got to first solve thyself before you could solve anyone else. Thank you very much, Jessica. Thank, Thank you, you for very much, Facebook. And I'll be back tomorrow with another educator who will be discussing with us some of the factors they're experiencing while online.